All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. Been hammering out some more uh, ornaments tonight and uh, gonna package those up. And guys, I am done with ornaments for a while. Oh, I've had all the fun with building ornaments that I care to have and I'm moving on to something else. So, but what I did decide, I've had a lot of people messaging me and asking me questions about how, how to make certain files in Lightburn and so forth. So I decided tonight, and, and y'all let me know if you think this is a good idea or if you like the video or whatever, uh, just give me a little comment down below. But what I'm going to do is tonight I am going to show you how to go about creating your own files if you choose to. Now, I will be putting these designs on my Etsy shop. If you want to purchase those, you can. But if you're feeling uh, like maybe you want to build your own designs and come up with your own shapes and sizes or whatnot, then I'm going to go over to Lightburn and I guess I'm going to call this a crash course in Lightburn for some of you guys that may be new to the uh, laser engraving and you want to do something cool for Christmas. Uh, this will help maybe get you kick started and, and get you going to where you can get these things turned out. And I'm just going to show you some basic very basic light burn functions that you need to be able to, you know, to know that exist and be aware of how to use. And uh, you'll be able to turn out these kind of uh, items. So stick around for a few minutes. I'm gonna move over to the computer. The majority of this video tonight, guys, is gonna be on the computer because that's where you design these at. And uh, that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. So stick around. All right, guys, I'm going to be using Lightburn, of course. And like I said, I'm going to give you a little bit of a crash course in Lightburn. This is going to be very basic, guys. I'm not going anything in too in-depth uh, because it's, Lightburn is a very, very versatile tool. And disclaimer, I am not a professional. I have learned a lot on Lightburn. Uh, I do make my own designs. I do do a lot of, uh, a lot of engineering my own products and stuff with it. So... I've got a pretty good understanding and mosquitoes are out, but luckily it's cooler out here tonight. So you won't be able to see me uh, sweating. All right, before we start guys, like I said, I'm gonna do this as if you are brand new to Lightburn. This is gonna be a crash course. This is Lightburn 101, whatever you wanna call it. So if you're familiar with Lightburn guys, this is probably gonna be a little repetitive to you. Feel free to skip forward and uh, try to find something that maybe you, you don't know, but I will be throwing some little tips in, so, you know, don't want to miss that. So, to start off with, guys, <clears throat> the, uh, the interface, if you haven't already on your, on your machine, all right, there is a few things that you may want to make sure you've got enabled, and there comes Guinea's guys. She's coming in to say hey. Uh, make sure you've got field and smooth selected here because if you don't guys you're going to be like why is it not filling you know it makes it makes graphics look different so let me let me just show you i'll start by demonstrating i'm going to pull a little picture of a chihuahua up here and so we're going to change the way that this looks so i'm going to change it to wireframe course that's what you get okay if i change it to wireframe smooth that's what you get that is very confusing when you're trying to do lines and engraves. There's field course, which if your computer will do it, and hopefully it will, go with field and smooth. This is the way I run mine. So if, if, if that works for you, that's what I think you should do. All right. The next thing you're going to want to have is you're going to want to have your art library. Uh, this is early on. I did not understand the importance of this art library, guys. This thing is a time saver. OK, uh, you can create you can create designs and drop them in there and you can add them to other designs that you have going. And it is very, very handy. So some basic things that I'm going to go over to start with, guys. This is going to be kind of I'm going to show you how to use the, the Boolean features. And if I'm not saying that word right, guys, don't beat up on me, okay? Uh, but what I'm going to do is we're going to make a cat dog, all right? And I'm going to do that using the booleans. So basically, if you have two images, and this comes in handy uh, when you're doing text and you're doing shapes and stuff like that. If you have two images 
and you want to combine those two images. We're going to make a cat dog, so we're going to do it this way. All right. You can take those two images. If you select both of those, this button right here will basically merge those two together. All right. So now you have a cat dog. All right. It's a little hard to understand why you would need that unless you're doing something like, let's say, making a Christmas ornament. So if you're making a Christmas ornament, we're going to do that because that's kind of what I told you I would show you how to do. All right, you're going to want to start with whatever basic shape that you want to use for your ornament. All right, guys, uh, take this circle, for instance. I'm going to set this circle, and I'm not, I'm not using any particular measurements, guys. Use your own measurements. Figure out how big you want it because I'm just, I'm just slapping something together just for the purpose of showing you guys how to throw this stuff together. All right, so that's, that's, I'm going to go with a round shape on this one, and that is a very large ornament. So, like I said, measure how big you want it. I'm just making it big enough to where the workspace, you can see it better. All right, and, uh, of course, you're going to need somewhere to attach uh, your string or wire or whatever. I don't like making these, you know, perfectly round or anything. I kind of, I always kind of go with, like, a little egg shape. All right. One of the features that I like about Lightburn that I really, really like is you can click this graphic, just like in a design software, click this graphic, because technically it is a design software. These little buttons, if you ever get lost and don't know what they do, just hover over them. But this button here will basically put those two center axis of those two, puts them together, okay? And now that, you know, I know what you're thinking, oh, that's a, a you know, crazy looking shape. But you can go about this next step two different ways, guys. Drag and drop a box that'll select both of them. Or you can take, select that one, hold control, click the other one. This is where this little contraption here comes in handy. All right, you're going to be able to take those two shapes and put them together. So now you have one continual shape. And you can do this as much as you want, guys. I mean, you can add shapes to the sides of it, to the top of it, to whatever, to whatever. All right, so... Now I've got my basic shape of how I would like for a Christmas ornament to look. So the next step is to decide, do I want this to just be a cutout or do I want like a trace of engraving around the edges? All right, if you want a trace of engraving around the edges, the easiest way to do this that I know of, and like I said, all this is as far as I know, guys. Like I said, not an expert, just passing on what I do know. This little feature right here, you will learn to love. So mark that one, like put, if you could like highlight that button right there, that button will save you a lot of work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit highlight shape and I'm going to tell it to go inward. And what I want to do right now is I want to go just inside that cut line and create another line. All right. I did that. Now I want to change that line to a fill. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's a, just a big blob of black now, but don't panic. I'm going to hit the offset line again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put 2.5 millimeters inward. All right, hit OK. Now what that did is that created this thick line right here that is going to be an engrave, but you still have the cut as well. So I'm going to turn that off. See, there's still a cut there, but the cut is literally 0.02 millimeters outside the painted area so that's going to give me this is going to be my cut layer and then this is my engraved layer but the end product is going to be engraved and then the, the laser is going to cut it and if i zoom way in guys you can see that it is just going to be the, the curve of the laser basically is going to butt you up against the side of this uh, engraved area so that's what i was doing there i was just making just making a border around that so if you just don't want just a boring piece of wood then you can you know do that all right next thing that you're going to need on your ornament is you're going to need some way of attaching it to the tree whether it be with twine uh lace whatever you know ribbon my wife uses ribbon all right getting this thing centered you know you would think that would be a job guys but it's really not Okay, Rogue sees the cats. Rogue is my German Shepherd female, and she doesn't like cats either. All right. You're going to get in predicaments like this right here occasionally, guys. I'm going to go ahead and show you the quick and easy way of doing this. 
The problem that I've got right here is I'm trying to click on that, that little circle. Whoop, I didn't mean to move that. I'm trying to click on that little circle, but every time I do, it keeps highlighting the outer area. All right, <clears throat> the way to fix that is when you click it and it does not click the shape that you want, just tap the tab button and it's gonna walk through the shapes that are inside that area. And so now I'm on to the one that I wanted to select. All right, to center this guy, what I'm gonna do to make it easy and make sure it's completely accurate is I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna select the outer line. All right, and then I'm gonna use this little button right here for centering and that's gonna slide it to the center. So now we have the outer boundary, the little shape that we have here for some, you know, Christmas ornament or whatever. And we've got our cut. That's that cut is for the uh, the string. So I'm gonna go ahead before I move anything and I'm gonna right click on these, select them by dragging. That's the easiest way. You're gonna right click right here and you're gonna group those guys. What grouping does is it does not allow you to move any part of this thing now without moving the whole thing. So if I didn't have it grouped, you would actually be able to move the lines or move this little circle. But by grouping it, now we can't move any part of it without moving the whole thing, which is good because when you're adding graphics and you're starting to move stuff around it, it just keeps, it keeps the base part here organized. All right. So next step here. This is where I recommend, if you're going to be using this shape a lot, I recommend creating yourself an art library like I have over here. All right, you will see that I have my default, which is just kind of some designs that I use occasionally. Then I got animals, I got Christmas, I got Easter, I got file design, I got geography, which is, you know, geographical stuff. I got logos, I got nature, I got outlines for different shapes that I use, I got sports. And I have text, all right. I also have a lot of other designs before I really started leaning into this library that I just haven't used to bring back in there because I've had to go sit down and categorize this thing. So if you're just getting in a light burn, guys, take my advice and go ahead and create you some folders in here. All right, I'm gonna show you how to create a new library right quick just to, to run through it. There's a button down here. If you don't have a library, you're gonna have to hit the button that says new. All right, it's gonna pop up. It's gonna ask you, where do you want to save this library? Uh, in my situation, I use uh, a shared drive that's on my network and I go in here and these are all of my different libraries, okay? So I'm just gonna create one called test and I'm gonna save that, all right? So now the test library has loaded into Lightburn. The way that you put things in there is like, once I've got this shape built, I've got everything grouped together and all that, I click it, go over here to import from project, and I'm gonna name this uh, test ornament. All right, hit okay. Now that test ornament is in my library, so I can delete that out of my workspace. I can go to these other folders and look at this stuff. I can drag, drag me a state of Alabama in there. I can go over here and grab me a Clack Shack logo and drop in there. And then I can go, of course, if I wanted to, and uh, just put this stuff together real quick. And I can grab my little ornament I just built and bring it over here. And if you really wanna, you know, get everything put in there, then you just, you can, you can throw it all together. So that's kind of the purpose of the art library, guys. It's just a quick reference for parts. Uh, and when you build things like I do, it's kind of nice to be able to drag those parts in and not have to go out and import them necessarily. So that's the basics of how the library works. Now, you may, if you change computers or whatever, if you use a network drive, you'll have to load them and unload them. Uh, I typically, like I'll unload this one just to show you. We'll go unload the test, all right? So now, if you notice, I do not any, I don't have test anymore. All right, well, if I wanted to reattach test, let's say like my Christmas, like this Christmas one right here. All right, January gets here. I may not want that in my, I may not want that in my menu here. So I can unload that one and unload Easter and just keep the ones that I might actually need 
And then as those seasons get near and I'm doing designs for that, I can go back and load them in. And this is how you load them back in. I'm just gonna go to load. And then you, of course, you'll have to navigate to the lo location where all your libraries are saved. And I'm gonna here to one, this one that says test. Just click on it, hit open, and wow, there you go. I got my ornament back, you know. So those are handy, guys, especially for seasonal stuff or specialty stuff. Mine got to where there was so much stuff in there, it just took me forever to dig through there and find everything. So I had to start, uh, I had to start kind of subcategory and everything out. Uh, but I'm gonna unload that one now because, well, no, we gotta finish our, we gotta finish our design, guys. What am I thinking? Let me get my test back. There we go. All right, so let me get my design back in my workspace here. So that's basically how you make a shape, guys. Uh, one more thing that I will show you because this is something of a Christmas ornaments that is pretty cool that you can do and you may want to do. First thing is grab yourself a circle. All right, make it into a tool line. All right, once you get you a circle, you can kind of shape it doing using the mouse and you're going to want to get it shaped as big as you want. Select it, hold control, select the outside. And then use the center button. I, got, I actually got that one pretty close. All right, so now if you wanted this thing to say Merry Christmas, but you didn't want just a typical Merry Christmas, you, you can go in here and type you some text. And there's your word Merry. Pay attention because this is uh this is unique. Now in a perfect world, and if you have all the time and you just want to be, you know, want to make it land correctly, you actually have to figure out where this circle starts at. I'll go ahead and tell you that. If you don't know where this line starts at, you will have to do some adjustments. I have learned that I can almost always be just as fast by going over here, clicking my text, click on my, my frame line, my little tool line, and you're going to go up here to Tools. Apply path to text. All right, that's gonna happen. All right, <laughs> it's it's dependent on where this circle starts as where it puts the text, and that is going to happen. All right, typically I can just kind of splash this thing around with that button, and then go up here, do a back ninety, and then just reshape my circle. All right, I don't get wrapped around the axle about where the design starts at because it's just such a pain sometimes it won't let you see it because you have to ungroup it you have to do all these things and so typically i will just i will just make it stick to the line and then i'll go in here and manipulate it and get it how i want it that text is attached to this line whichever way this line goes or leans your text is going to move with it so if you want to make your text you know round and get it consistent with your your uh, ornament that's how you do it right there guys all right word of advice if you do this and you use those to get them to match just go down here copy that one oh, oh, oh. i slid something hang on and then just paste you another one and what you're going to do with this one, though, guys, is you're going to pull this one to where it's up here. All right. And you can throw you some text in down here. All right. Change to the pointer. You've always got to have the pointer selected to, to group this stuff. Hold control. Click the circle. Tools, apply to, te uh, to path, and as always, guys, what I tell you it was going to do, it popped it way up there. All right, not a big deal. Like I said, hit that button, it flips it around. I, I just assume do that, then have to sit here and try to figure out exactly where this little circle starts. Now, you're going to want to make sure you get this centered with the ornament. And then there's your text. Now, if seeing these blue tool lines bothers you guys, just turn them off, turn the frame off, and there you go. 
And let's say if I wanted to put a snowflake on my Christmas ornament. Oh. Drag that out of my text. All right, I'm gonna take, click that. I'm gonna click the outer frame and I'm gonna have a little center align them, which is pretty close. So there is a, that's a really large, really, really large <laughs> uh, Christmas ornament. Another thing that I've started doing, guys, that you may want to try is going here to your uh, settings. And I've actually turned flood fill on for these guys. Uh, it seems to cut out, it cuts out a lot of your white space so that when it's running back and forth, it'll just kind of burn these. And if you look at the, uh, we'll, we'll go over here, look at preview and I'll show you what I'm saying. So if you look at this, uh, total estimated time, 22, 22 minutes, woo. That's fast, that's long. Uh, but how many passes? Uh, let's just see. Oh, it's because it's so it's because it's so huge. <laughs> okay. I was fixing this up. Oh no, 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 no. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna show you what difference is made. I was trying to figure out why in the world a Christmas ornament was fixed to take 22 minutes. And then it, it dawned on me that this thing's the size of a bus. Because uh, watch this. Let me update my overlay. Look at that. I mean, that almost takes up my entire workspace. Uh, one of my regular size Christmas ornaments. I'll put one of them in the workspace so you can see the difference. So that's that's why it's going to take 22 minutes right there, guys. It is huge. All right. So, but we go back. Let's go over this again. 22 minutes with flood fill. All right. If you go back to your cuts here. You go into your cut. If I turn flood fill off, I'm gonna right click again, preview, 29 minutes. So it's not a big, big difference uh, on that file, but it is a difference, it's seven minutes. So if you do three of these, you save enough time to make one more and have that fourth one. So I recommend when you got a lot of white space like that, just go ahead and run it. It does help. Uh, and it also, it, if you have a line up here in part of your graphic, it tends not to carry over to the rest of the graphic as bad. But that's pretty much the down and dirty guys on the basics that I think you need to know to be able to do like a basic Christmas ornament or you can do, you can do other cuts. Um, I use, like I said, I use my gallery, my art gallery a lot. All right, and then it, we'll, go, we'll go over this too. Once you've built your uh, ornament, if you decide that you want to save it, I recommend before you do anything, group everything together. All right. You can resize if needed. And then what you're going to do there is now, if, if, if this is an easy way to keep up with everything, you can just put test ornament two. And now, if you wanted to do like a bunch of ornaments, you can just drag that one out here, all right? And then you can drag that one out here. And you can drag yourself a, a bunch of deer if you wanted. So that's what, to me, the art gallery is a very, very overlooked, but very, very valuable tool when using light burn. So, but that's it for tonight, guys. That is your crash course in making an ornament. Uh, you can do text, you can you, go, you can go snag you some images, whatever you want to do, uh, and get creative, or you can just go by the Clack Shack Etsy and uh, grab a pack of them there if you want. But like I said, guys, I, I'm, I'm here to, to help teach you. Uh, I do sell my designs because a lot of people ask me because they're just not comfortable, and so I make the designs and sell them to kind of support my habit out here and keep my equipment up to date. And... Uh, but if you want to make your own, guys, feel free. That's the steps that I go through to make mine. Uh, one thing that I will show you, and I'm going to use mine. I'm going to use my little design pack. See, this is the way I've got mine set up, guys. That's my little ornament design pack right there. All right, that's the, for, this is a two-layered. This is the, the outer layer, and that's the backer. All right, so if I wanted to make one with a animal in it, we'll use a we'll do it, grocer. All right. This is where you're gonna really like those bullion. Why don't I like my rooster cockeyed? No pun intended. 
All right. So if you get in that situation, hit tab, guys. There you go. All right. So I'm going to put the rooster over here. If you look right here, guys, I've got two lines that are that are overlapping. So I'm just going to hold control and I'm going to bump this up until I get his toe out of the bottom of my circle. And what I'm doing here is I'm wanting to join the rooster and the ring around the rooster together as one shape so that it doesn't cut it apart. And that way this ring and the rooster will stay where it needs to be during the, the you know cutout process. So I'm selecting both of them by dragging a square and then just marry them together using that button. And now those two guys are one piece. And if you notice, it just dissolved into the other element of the design. Now, if you're gonna cut this out, uh, you're gonna need to go in here and ungroup all of this. And then you're gonna have to go into these lines on the inside right here and use Boolean again. I always do 0 0.02, it works for me, inward, hit OK, and then you're like, oh no, I, I broke it, but I didn't, because I want that to be a cut, so I'm going to click cut line, and once I do that, now, if I turn off the uh, shading, you'll see that now it's a cut line right outside where my rooster is, so I'm going to come back in here, I'm going to click on that one, on that edge, Go over here, I'm going to make it go outward, 0 0.02, OK, and then click cut line. So now I have a cutout, all right? And this is going to engrave first because fill is up top. And the way you change that, guys, if you're new to the program, is you just grab it and slide it. It's that simple. Just pick it up, slide it right there. And you're gonna to wanna to put fill up top first so that you can fill it. And then once it gets through filling, it will come back and it will uh, cut it out. And then you take that piece there, this piece here, glue it to this piece here. And it's a two layered ornament, like the ones that you see that I make. So there you go, guys. I hope that helps. And I'm gonna get off the computer and go over here where you can actually see me. All right, guys, I hope, uh, I hope this helped you out and if, if you needed it. If you didn't need it and you just watched it to see if I showed you anything new, uh, <laughs> maybe you got a little something out of it anyway. Uh, but like I said, the importance of the library, if you're just getting in a light burn, you're going to overlook that, that library. But, man, that thing is a valuable tool once you start accumulating graphics and images and stuff like that. So I recommend if you're just getting started in a light burn, go ahead and set that up. Start categorizing everything. And that way you don't have to spend three hours of your life like I did trying to go back and, and, and export those back into those sub libraries. Uh, that's a very useful little tip. Uh, so even if you're a pro and you've been using it, if you haven't been creating those subfolders, guys, go back. I'm telling you, do it now while you still can. Uh, but like I said, guys, I hope this helps. Uh, I'm going to go in for the night. I got to go package up these, uh, these new designs that I have for the... Uh, ornaments and i'll be dropping those on my etsy store i got a lot of different shapes i'm going to, i'm going to have a a pets package i'm going to have a barnyard package then i'm going to have my traditional christmas package with uh, a lot of the angels and stuff like that i got to figure out how i'm gonna put all this stuff together and put it in the etsy store uh, so if you don't feel like you want to try to conquer your own design then uh, like i said feel free to grab some of mine but if you do if you follow these steps then you should be able to pull it off and uh, just throw some throw some cut settings in there and engraving settings and you should be good to go so if you haven't already guys please hit the subscribe button and uh, next week tuesday i believe it is amazon says that my new sony is going to be here the new camera i can't wait for it to get here i'm hoping that it's not going to be uh any problems with me operating it i've been trying to cram some youtube videos figure out how to work that thing so hopefully when it gets here the video quality will go up ever so slightly and uh, things will be a little better. But uh, like I said, guys, once more, just uh, hit that subscribe on your way out and I appreciate you. Have a good day.